What's on the surface right now is getting a deeper understanding, a higher awareness of some of the pain and the heartbreak you've been dealing with. The High Priestess is all about secrecy, veils of illusion, okay? Oftentimes when the High Priestess comes through and, as a response to a question like, well, when is this going to happen? Or I need more information or I want more information and the High Priestess comes out, she often comes out and says, we're not giving you any more information. Whatever we give you is on a need to know basis. Hey everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Happy Friday to you. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you've had a good week, yes? So um, this is going to be a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, and also this is a fairly timeless reading, yes? So whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's most likely, most likely the message for you in that moment. Um, I have a new crystal, Stella sent Stella sent a bunch of new wonderful things. Carolyn also sent some wonderful new things. But this, uh, I was I was doing the Aquarius reading for last month, for this month actually, for September. And I had this one clear quartz crystal that I've been carrying around with me for a very long time. Um, and like I, I would carry that crystal with me everywhere I go. Um, and while I was doing that Aquarius reading, the crystal, I, I, my hand hit it and it went flying and it fell on the floor and I have marble floors and a piece of the crystal broke off. And so Stella got wind of that and asked me, you know, which I would like as a replacement. And so I picked this Himalayan clear quartz crystal and it's beautiful. I love it. It's my new favorite thing. Um, I got it in the mail. I picked it up yesterday and, and when I opened it and picked it up, take it out, took it out, sorry, took it out of the wrapping and I held it in my hand, I immediately felt the connection and I immediately was like, oh, oh, hello, my new friend. <laughs> How are you? Um, and it's wonderful, like it fits right in my hand, like I can, ooh, you see that? Don't break this, please, Eric, good God. But anyway, like I was holding it in my hand like this at one point and have you ever seen, have you ever seen those memes um, that like, you know, talked about how people can be spiritual, but like they'll, they'll kick your ass at the same time. Have you ever seen the meme with the, uh, with the, um, the, the crystal, what is it? What are they called? They're, um, brass knuckles, but I mean, they're not brass knuckles cause they're not brass. They're made out of crystal, but have you ever seen those? I was holding it like this yesterday and I was thinking about that and I was like, huh. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for this, Stella. I really appreciate it. It's one of my, it's my new favorite thing. Um, and then Carolyn, who, so if y'all don't know, Stella is an individual that has been um, connected to the channel for quite a while. Um, and she's been sending, donating a, all kinds of beautiful things to the channel. Um, the big claim to fame was the, the, all of the crystals the beautiful crystals that Stella um, sent here. Let me show you. I have some of them set up right here. Uh, let me show you. Right, right there. Like some of those crystals that um, that amethyst globe, the rose quartz, the selenite right there, the fluorite right there. Don't mind the mess. In it. <laughs> but um, so Stella has been donating to the channel, very graciously donating to the channel for a very long time. And then Carolyn, hi Carolyn. Carolyn is someone is, both Carolyn and Stella are very good friends of mine at this point, but Carolyn is someone that um, found the channel a few, a while ago, again, while I was still in Brooklyn. And she and I have been, you know, communicating with each other and developing a relationship and it's been really wonderful. Carolyn is an angel medium. She has a channel here uh, on YouTube. It's called Wisdom of the Angels. Check her out if you don't know of her. She's fantastic. Her readings are wonderful. Um, but she sent a bunch of new decks for me to play with. Um, we have the Life Purpose Oracle. We also have the Guardian Angel Oracle. And then we have this one deck that I'm actually really super excited to, 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 um, to work with. 
Uh, I busted it open today, right before I started. I, I played around with those all these new cards right before I, you know, sat down and got ready to do morning coffee today. Um, oh, wait, let me plug my phone back in. <laughs> um, but this deck, I am really super excited to work with. It's called the Liquid Crystal Oracle. It was brand new. Um, I wasn't expecting, I, I don't know why I want to mention that. Maybe I'm just so excited. But like she was, Carolyn was just sending me decks that she no longer uses. And so I didn't expect to get a brand new, brand spanking new deck, like never even been opened, still had, still wrapped in the cellophane. I, I'm like so excited about, <laughs> about this. Um, but I'm really, really, really excited to work with this deck this liquid crystal oracle. Um, so I definitely feel like that's what we're gonna get our oracle guidance from for today's reading, yes. So also, uh, for this reading, I'm kind of feeling like I wanna go back to how I was how it was before, and I, I wanna get like a weekend edition, all right? So just like a general weekend reading for the collective here, okay? So we're gonna do that, yeah? So let's get into this, guys. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I haven't been updating on YouTube. I've actually been doing a lot of uh, a lot of daily stuff. Like uh, this week, I've been focusing my like daily readings, other than like the live streams that I did this week. The two, the one of them that I did actually, I only did one this week. Um, but I have been posting updates on Patreon. Yeah, so check me out on Patreon. Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. I know you guys have been saying that, or, oh, I'm sorry. Also, the link to that can be found in the description box below. Now, I know you guys have been hearing me say this for a long time, um, and it's been fairly ambiguous. I haven't really given you what is changing, but there are changes happening. There are some changes that are happening, you guys. I'm not fully ready to announce it, completely announce it to the whole collective yet. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not disappearing. Um, but I am putting into place, putting into practice some changes that I have been um, working on getting in alignment with and, uh, and working on getting energetic, in energetic alignment with. And now um, we are at a point where the physical reality is starting to reflect the energetic change that I am expressing. It's really only in the beginning stages of it, but as time goes on, I'll be announcing more and revealing more. Yes? Excellent. All right, guys, let's get into this here. Uh, we're just gonna get, I don't have an agenda. Um, again, there is a lot going on in the collective, but if you wanna get like that low down, that skivvy on it, check us out on Patreon. Yeah, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Link can be found in the description box below. All right, kids, let's get into this here and we'll see what messages we have for the collective today. For this weekend, actually, for this weekend. Yeah, cool, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, romances, relations, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for the collective today. This is one. This is two. This is three for the collective. And I'm using, I'm starting with the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. This deck here. This is four. And this is five. 
Alrighty, kids. Let's see what we've got for today, yeah? What's going on with the collective? What do we want to talk about with the collective for this weekend? For this weekend edition. Okay. First card out, you guys, is the Three of Swords. What's going on with the collective for this Three of Swords here? What's going on? What's going on with the collective here? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. The reason why I'm laughing like this is because um, it's, it's becoming blatantly obvious to me that whatever I'm going through is something that's, it is a discussion that's needed to have with the collective, like the collective, but whatever I'm going through, the collective tends to be going through as well. Okay. What you have here, you guys, is the three of swords with the high priestess. Okay. And then at the bottom of the deck, you have the queen, damn, you have the queen of pentacles to the six of pentacles to the seven of pentacles to the tower. Okay. You do have the nine of swords underneath that, but that's, I, I don't, I don't really want to, I don't really want to go into that for right now maybe we'll get into it in a second but let's just focus what's focus on what we have in front of us at the moment okay what's on the surface what's on the surface right now is under it is getting a deeper understanding or or you could say because spirit just said a higher awareness of some of the pain and the heartbreak you've been dealing with over wow Okay, what I just heard was over the last few centuries, 11-11 on the counter, I just heard over the last few centuries. So this is karmic, this is ancestral, this is energy of the toxic masculine, or I'm sorry, this is energy of the dynamic of the toxic masculine and the toxic feminine, okay? Um, because like, like this whole narrative about how it's the masculine that's like, all toxic I don't know where that's coming from I've never really I, I, well that's not true um I don't necessarily know where that's coming from but I want to say that both the masculine and the feminine have some toxic shit that they both need to deal with all right like that's okay um even though yes we are in a masculine dominated patriarchal society the feminine has its own toxicity to deal with as well okay but what I'm getting for the collective here at this point with the Three of Swords and the High Priestess, there's a deeper level of understanding that you're coming to when it comes to the heartbreak and the pain that that is associated with this. Okay, and this is absolutely what is is something that's being reflected in my life as well, um, because I personally am going through a moment where I'm starting to get a much deeper understanding of a lot of the challenges that I have faced in my life up until this point. And it was, these are things that I never really understood before. And, and, it, and I found that it was so difficult for me to deal with them. It was so difficult for me to handle them. And these things never really went away. They kept coming back up. Like I would go through periods or phases where I would face it, I would handle it in the moment, I would be able to feel better or I would be able to rise above it in the moment for a little bit. And then next thing you know, all of a sudden, however long later, doesn't matter really, but later on it down the path, all of a sudden it comes back up. And sometimes it would even come back up with a vengeance, right? But that vengeance was partially for me was the reality of, hold on a second, wait, I thought I dealt with this. Why is this coming back up? And why am I, why am I feeling this again? And that would only really make it feel worse, right? It would only add to the pain. Well, what we're coming to, what I'm finding is that I'm coming to an under, a deeper understanding of what's really beneath all of that. Some of the things that have been hidden from me in, in terms of that. And it's not, and not saying that it's really been hidden from me in a malicious way. It was just things that were, I guess I should say maybe that it wasn't hidden from me, but it was outside of my range of view. I wasn't able to perceive of it in the past. But now in the energetic vibration that I find myself, I am able to perceive of it or I am ready to perceive of it and ready to accept it. 
So this is one of those situations, you guys, where the universe, as in the high priestess, because the high priestess is all, the high priestess is all about secrecy. Secrecy, veils of illusion, okay? Oftentimes when the high priestess comes through and, as a response to a question like, well, when is this going to happen? Or I need more information or I want more information and the high priestess comes out, she often comes out and says, we're not giving you any more information. We are giving you the information that you need at this time. Whatever we give you is on a need to know basis. And right now, you don't need any other, other extra information about this to handle whatever it is you need to handle at this time. But, but the universe doesn't do this to torture us, to sabotage us. Um, and this is definitely not a malicious thing. It actually, there actually is a very real and good reason for that. Because often when we, when we're seeking this extra information or whatnot, whatever, it's information that actually would hinder our process. And now, of course, that all depends on what exactly it is you are trying to achieve at the time. But the universe isn't just going to hand you all the information, tell you when something's going to happen, tell you why something's going to happen, tell you how something's going to happen. Because if you know things like that too early in advance, that could derail the whole process. That could derail any of the other elements that you are meant to be interacting with, meant to be dealing with, meant to be learning from, any of the other lessons you are meant to be learning on this journey, on the path towards wherever it is you're trying to go. And if the universe gives you all of that information up front, then it's going to derail the process. It could potentially derail the process, right? If you knew that you did that, you know, your efforts weren't really going to pay off until like a certain time period, you may not even work towards that until then. Which off the, right off the bat, it feels like if, if that were the case, then you would miss out on however long of a time period that you would have had in developing or honing this skill as you were working for it, waiting for your success to come through. Does that make sense? Okay, so where we find ourselves in the collective right now is at a moment of getting a deeper understanding of what is or has been hurting you because now you're ready to understand it. Now you're ready to receive that understanding and that knowledge. And, and, and I tell you what, you guys, this is exactly what I've reached, a point that is exactly a point that I've reached lately. Because there are certain dynamics within, like, we'll say my family, like my immediate family, or maybe the, even the extended family, or just like certain things, certain elements in my life that I have always come up against and never understood why things were happening this way. Well, now I'm ready to receive it. Now I'm ready to perceive of it. Now I'm ready to understand the dynamic that always made me feel like such an outcast. Like I didn't fit in the family, like I was the black sheep. And when you think about it, at least in my immediate family, between my mother, my father, and my sister, I am the black sheep. I am the individual that has done everything completely differently. Not because I wanted to be spiteful, not because I wanted to be an asshole, but just because I'm different. I'm just different. But that doesn't mean I'm not part of the family. It's just that I am different. I don't vibe that way. I don't have that same thoughts, those same thoughts. I don't have those same desires. Like I don't want to work towards, I'm not striving towards the same things they are. And that's not wrong. It never was wrong. It never has been wrong, but it created a rift between us because neither of us understood, I guess. We'll, we'll go ahead and say that. I mean, I know for sure I didn't understand. I was a fucking kid, right? My parents didn't understand because they were of a certain mindset. They grew up in a certain way. They developed certain beliefs and certain understandings and certain work ethics. Like they grew up in a different time than I did. So n neither of us really understood each other. And then there was my sister who was very much like them very much thinks the same way, works towards the same things, has the same goals. And then here I am, the oddball, right? And because, and then my sister was in the middle of it. She didn't understand either. 
But now I get it. Now I see why. And it's not anything malicious. It's not like, oh yeah, I see, I see who you are now, you mom. No, no, it's not like that. Now I, now I see the difference. Now I see why there has, because there is a, literally a fundamental difference of character. That doesn't mean that they're, I'm not trying to bash their character. I'm not saying that they're bad. No, 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 no. It's just a literally a fundamental difference in character. That's it. Well, it's not purely it. I mean, it, 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 it. I'm not going to go into the specifics, but like if, the, but this, this type of distance, or I'm sorry, this type of difference can create a massive upheaval in the right situations. Okay. But see, now I get it. Now I see deeper. Now I see more of the truth. Why? Because I'm ready to receive it. I'm ready to understand it. Now, the overall energy being the Queen of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles and then the Tower is whatever it is you're coming to a deeper understanding of at this time. It's all in relation to your sense of self-worth and how it is you want to show up in the world, kind of. But what I'm hearing is how you want to provide or what it is you want to provide or you, just your sense of self-worth and value. Okay, so, Queen of Pentacles to the Six of Pentacles. There is a balance of give and take. So yes, what it is you want, how it is you want to provide, what it is you bring to the table, whatnot, whatever, all that kind of stuff, right? There is a deeper understanding of the lack of reciprocity, of the lack of honor, of the lack of respect, whatever, however this resonates for you, okay? And then that's leading you to the Seven of Pentacles, Again, a deeper understanding, recognizing what is working and what's not working, recognizing what it is you have growing in your garden versus what it is you want growing in your garden. And thus, then we have the tower, a big upheaval, a big change, a big, big change. Now, what I want to look at, I want to go deeper down the bottom of the deck because underneath the tower is the nine of swords to the hierophant to the star, to the three of pentacles, to the queen of wands. There you go. Okay. And I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I wanted, to, uh, I decided to go down a little bit further and talk about this more because underneath the tower is the nine of swords to the hierophant. So check it out, you guys. Both sides of the equation are losing their shit right now, are freaking the fuck out. Those energies that are on the side of the establishment even though they may have a good poker face on, they're shitting their pants right now. Why? Because you're waking up. Because you're starting to see past the illusion. Because you're starting to see past the fear and the fear mongering and the, and the control tactics, tactics. Now, you also are experiencing a bit of this Nine of Swords energy. However, your position feels much stronger than their position. And some of you feel like, yes, you have this, you, you're, you're fully aware of the fear that, um, that change brings. There's a lot of, you're fully aware of it. You're also aware of the fact that some, most of this fear is coming through because things are changing and things are so uncertain. I'm also getting for some of you that this Hierophant energy, this establishment energy is really pushing, putting on the hard sell. It's, it, for some of you, you have people around you that are heavily, heavily entrenched in this establishment energy. And they're pulling on their fear mongering tactics to really put the hard sell on you. To keep you from going in this direction of faith, healing and self mastery and alignment. It's not gonna work though. It's not going to work. You know, um, this also expressed itself in my, in my existence, in my life last night. This specifically, because, um, I have an, I had an agreement. I've had an agreement with a neighbor, um, with our internet access. We've been sharing it. Now I, when I moved to this place, I specifically asked the, the, the landlord, I said to him, can I get internet access here? Because if I can't get internet access here, then I can't live here because I can't work. 
Like, no internet, no job. So, and that, and those of you that have been following me for long enough, you know how much of a struggle that's been. Not only getting the internet access, but maintaining it. Because it was ripped down three times, but that's because of the nature of where we are on this mountain and how it was set up. And it was, it was a struggle. Like, it was a challenge getting internet access here, but it happened and I'm grateful for it. Anyway, someone else moved into another apartment in the building and was like, hey, you've got this internet access. Do you think we could run a line from your place to a modem at my place and we could share the internet? I was like, fuck yeah, why not? So um, we'd been doing that for the last year and there was a part, there was a, 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 there was a stipulation in our agreement that I was real shifty, shady about in the beginning, but I let it, I let it slide. But now we've got, gotten to the point with all this growth and all this healing and all this focusing on self-worth and value and reciprocity that we've been working on, that I've been working on, but that we've been working on, on this collect in this collective here, in this challenging time. I came to a point where I said, Queen of Pentacles, I know what I know what I'm worthy of. Okay. I know my value and I respect myself. And I'm recognizing that something here is not balanced. Something here is not reciprocal. To a certain extent, I, like, I don't, I, like, I'm not trying to speak ill on my neighbor here. And I'm definitely not trying to speak ill on my character because he's a really great guy. Like, we're friends. We're cool. But some, I was, I felt like I was being taken advantage of because of one of the certain st stipulations about our bill and about our agreement. I'm not getting into the specifics. But in, in that sense, I came to this point where I said, you know what, something isn't right here, seven of pentacles. And I've learned my lesson in terms of allowing myself to be taken advantage of or allowing myself to be devalued. And thus, because of that, I needed to speak up and I needed to say to him, look, this part of the agreement, I'm not, I'm not cool with any longer. This doesn't feel fair to me. And that brought in a tower moment and immediately his first reaction was feels like was a knee-jerk reaction and it very quickly ramped up into what could have been a real drama fueled situation even though what I had said to him in the beginning was was not disrespectful was not I mean it was all through text message so you know how that can get shady right how the the tone can be mis misinterpreted there right but I, I I was very clear I was very honest and I, I said my piece and I didn't say I wasn't trying to be disrespectful but then the drama popped off and so I had to take a step back and look and say like look that this doesn't have to be a fight okay I'm not I don't mean any malice I don't mean any disrespect I know we but I know we agreed to this a year ago but now in reassessing the situation, I don't think this is fair. And I think, and I said to him, because the drama was coming through, I was like, look, I'm, I'm not trying to like cause any trouble. Like we're free, we're, we're neighbors after all. Like I don't want any trouble. And maybe I should have started this, this conversation with, hey, can we renegotiate our agreement? But, but X, Y, and Z, this is how I feel. And I, I'm not willing to do this to, 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 to accept this part of the agreement any longer. So, I mean, maybe you should think about getting your own account or something at this point. I don't know. Like, if that's, if that's what's best for you, then by all means, go ahead. But me speaking up like that and speaking my truth and being honest, yes, did create a tower moment. And yes, did create fear. And yes, did create a, a, a reaction that was fairly manipulative. I'm not going to lie, like, I'm not trying to bash this person's character, but his first reaction was to respond with manipulative tactics, emotionally jarring manipulative tactics. But instead of giving into the fear, instead of letting fear mongering or projections of fear to control me, to keep me in line, to keep the same old situation going, which yes, was taking advantage of me. Like there, like 
again, not trying to speak ill of this person's character, not trying to bash this person at all. But when we get, when you boil it down, I was being taken advantage of. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? And that's the whole point of this situation. That's the whole point of coming to the deeper understanding of what's truly hurting you, right? So when I stood up, okay, and followed my heart and followed my intuition, now, the star, I had to confront the situation. And my intuition, my higher self was literally feeding me the narrative that I needed to speak, was feeding me the words, feeding me the truth that I needed to speak on behalf of myself. And so when I followed through with that, the star in faith, because I don't like confrontation, okay, it took me a day at least of hearing myself say this in my head to him over and over and over again for me to finally bite the bullet and be like, fuck, okay, I'll say something. But I don't like confrontation because what happened immediately I was met, well, not immediately, it took hours for him to respond, but I was met with this, fear-mongering and manipulative tactics. Again, I'm not trying to speak ill of his character, okay? Because he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. We're friends. He's my neighbor. All right? But I had to stick with faith. And stick with what my higher self and my heart was telling me to do. And what my higher self and my heart was guiding me towards is something that has been developed through my self-mastery. All the work that I've been doing on myself. And it was in direct alignment with my alignment. And when I stayed true to my alignment and what it is I was naturally feeling, where it is I was naturally being guided to go, when I stayed true to that, when I spoke my truth in a respectful way, you don't have to be disrespectful, guys, especially if or even if the individual or the situation that you, have, you are confronting has been disrespectful to you. You don't have to fight fire with fire. If the situation is already ablaze, what is adding more fire to the situation going to do? Just make the fire bigger and make it even harder to control. Okay. But when I did that, I totally lost my train of thought there. But when I did that and I stayed and I stuck to it because I don't like confrontation and I knew it was going to go exactly where it went, but I still stayed respectful, I kept my, I held my center, and I just spoke my truth. And what I got in response, ultimately, was an agreement, page of cups. An agreement that we both feel comfortable with. But it never would have happened if I didn't stand my ground and love myself and nine of pentacles, the empress, the magician, and the wheel of fortune. Stand your ground, connect to the abundance and the unconditional love of the universe, and then make your moves to make your man to, to bring your manifestation into the into the world, into the physical realm, and the universe will respond. Nine of Pentacles, the Empress, the Magician, and the Wheel of Fortune. Stand your ground, be independent, be sovereign, come to your conclusions. Connect with the unconditional love and the abundance of the universe. Make your moves to manifest what it is you want to bring into reality. And the universe will respond. <laughs> that feels so good. That feels so, so good to say. Okay, guys. Um, I don't really want to get into clarification. It's, it's like overboard and arbitrary. It's really not important at this time. There's really nothing else I want to clarify. It all is pretty straightforward and clear. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to move forward to our closing oracle guidance that we're going to get from the Liquid Crystal Oracle. Like just holding this book, it's so thick and like fresh and new, you guys. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. All right, <laughs> here we go. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit, for, for the collective at this time. Um, 
Like, I almost don't even want to shuffle these cards because I want them to stay, like, pristine and nice. But I'm going to give this three shuffles. That was one. This is two. And I'm shuffling them in a way that I never shuffle them before. Normally, I shuffle them from the top, but this time I'm doing it from the side. And it's working. <laughs> and I'm not bending them. This is three. That's one of my pet peeves, you guys. Like, I love doing the parlor shuffle for my cards, but I hate what it does to the cards. Like, it bends them, and just, like, it ruins decks after a while. Anyway. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance for the co- There it is, right there. Bam! Look at this. This is Kunzite. Heart Activation. God, this book is so thick! Don't mind me, you guys. I'm crazy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Kunzite. Okay. There it is. Nope, that's Kyanite. Kunzite. Okay, what I'm going to read from, because there is, there is so much information. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to read the Healing Journey today section. Kunzite. Heart. Activation. In the simplest of terms, if Kunzite has come to you, she has come to activate the heart and open you to a new level of love, both internally and in the world around you. Kunzite reminds us that as the world around us evolves and changes, the levels of love and activities that must be undertaken to recognize that love also vary. She comes as a messenger, entering life when you are missing something that the world around is offering. She has come to help you see through the heart and receive what you deserve, not by defining it, but simply knowing it is there in absolute, open-hearted, deserving trust. In the coming days, hold your judgments, mental chatter, and perceptions, and trust your feelings without the need to label them. Just feel your way. Let your heart be your guide, and the unconditional love that surrounds us all will have a chance to enter your life. Just as a falling tree in the forest won't break the eternal silence if there is no one there to hear it, unconditional love will also be all around you if you simply allow it and don't limit it with the mind. The affirmation of this card says, Quote, in peace, I walk the path of the active heart. Um, I want to read this last part. There's one last section of this card. It says, um, a note on the spiritual heart. To really understand Konzai, it takes many lifetimes, and we must know that her message is not really translatable into human embrace, for she represents unconditional love, a substance that is everywhere and in all things, held in the open state of active oneness through realization of unity and sacred purpose. The moment such sacred space is defined by a mortal mind, even through distant perception, it becomes limited, separated, isolated, and conditional, losing the basis of itself by conforming to that which those that were made in the image of God decide it is. Let me say that one more time. The moment such sacred space is defined by a mortal mind, even through distant perception, it becomes limited, separated, isolated, and conditional losing the basis of itself by conforming to that which those that were made in the image of God decide it is. So that means that it loses its, the core of its being, it loses its intrinsic self when we, those who were, who were created in the image of God, in the image of God, right? Those who were created in the image of God with our logical minds, we limit it by trying to define it, okay? Yes, Jinx, I know you want to go outside. Give me two seconds. I'm two minutes. I'm almost done. 
I promise, I'm almost done. Kunzite wishes to take you to a place of interaction and receptivity without question. A place so sacred that your greatest actions are stillness and allowing. For that is the true place of the all that is and is the real active heart only able to exist in unity. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>